Our last speaker today is John Ogden. His bio is really short. Uh, he's participated in a number of the MTA meetups that I've been at and is the author of When Mormons Doubt, A Way to Save Relationships and Seek a Quality Life. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, we've been standing for quite a while. I wonder if you could just stand up for maybe 30 seconds and stretch, because, well, this is the last stretch, right? Um, maybe feel into where you need to stretch and stretch there. <laughs> and maybe do one big breath. Yeah, shoulders, knees, and toes, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, I'd like to start today by talking about paradise. It's as good a place as any to start, right? So here we see Adam and Eve with their horse friend, um, their peacock friend, ostrich friend, right? Just living in peace and harmony in paradise and everything is well until you can see up on the branch the serpent shows up and the serpent says in the day you shall eat you will not surely die your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as the gods knowing good and evil right so you should be as the gods there's this sense there's this tension in the story that i really like they're in paradise and yet it isn't quite sufficient right and I think this tension can play out in our lives day to day. We can be completely at peace in the present, and yet there's this yearning to reach for something else, right? And so we move toward it. There's total satisfaction and dissatisfaction. And so we move. We want to be like the gods, right? Or to improve. And so I'd like to start with this quote from Joseph Smith, you've got to learn how to be gods yourselves, the same as all gods have done before you, and then immediately follow up with the question, what sort of gods? And I'd like to posit that the history of gods isn't terribly impressive. Uh, so, <laughs> or it's made me uh, tremendously cruel. So we have this story of the flood, God killing everyone but a family on an ark, right? Uh, the ancient Israelites decided that they wanted the warrior God, Yahweh, to lead them because they wanted to win wars. And so they chose Yahweh and they had mixed success. They won some wars, lost some, right? But they wanted to worship uh, Yahweh above all, they started a polytheistic, but then decided, no, Yahweh's the only God, and we're going to choose him so that we can win more wars. Uh, the Hellenistic God is um, it's a really gruesome painting, uh, but it's the Hellenistic gods ate their children, right? You, hear, you have stories of that. Here's Saturn being brutal. Uh, the Hindu gods, um, Jackson showed the, the happy side. Here's the dark side um, of the, you can see around the necklace, um, human heads. <laughs> so that's uh, gruesome. And then even in Christianity, you have the idea that the whole world is about to be burned, right? Coming in, it's going to be a complete destruction, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, Jesus gets in on this as well, talking about um, some will be taken. Uh, he says, as in the days of Noah, so, so, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And so gods destroy. So do our gods embody our destructive traits? If we go back 200,000 years ago at the dawn of Homo sapiens, you can see how we've, wherever we go, wherever we migrate, we bring destruction as well. You can see that we eliminated the Neanderthals and other species and we, we caused this destruction. And as human population rises, we see 
a rapid rise in extinctions as well. We see ecological damage. And uh, cruelty in a mass scale. Well, this is local. This is 10 miles away. So I grew up here in Utah Valley and Utah Lake. Uh, it's been, they've had problems with algae blooms. And when my Mormon ancestors came here, we overfished the lake in the 1870s and introduced invasive species. And we dumped raw sewage into Utah Lake until 1967. And so we might think that these, the things that we're doing today are going to have distant effects, but that's not so, right? I, I don't really swim in Utah Lake, <laughs> um, especially when there's algae blooms, because uh, we've affected it so much. It says that 90% of the biomass in the lake is crap, or carp, sorry. That was, <laughs> I, did not, I did not intend that. I did not intend that, but yes, that was, well, well, um, well done, Freudian slip. Um, and so we've, we've made Provo less like paradise in this sense, right? Our ancestors have made it less par paradisical. Um, and so we must ask, do we become what we worship? Is that, is that what's happening? Do we see, oh yeah, those are the gods that we, want to, that we want to emulate, and then we start emulating them even in their destructive capacities. And if so, I would posit that we must worship better gods. We must worship gods that aren't racist, that aren't sexist, that don't have bloodlust, right? These are, these are, this is the direction we must head in if we're going to really uh, answer the question, if we want to be the right sort of gods. And our concept of God needs to evolve, not just in what we can become, but in the vision that we have. So the, the, the vision must be ecumenical and full of love, even for the, the weakest among us, if we're really going to be godlike, in the sense that we want to be godlike, right? We're not aiming, we're not aiming just to flood the earth out of anger and vengeance. That's not really what we're going for here. We're not going for an um, early concept of God. So what's happening is that more and more young people are turning away from religion. I think this is one component in, that, in the reason why it's happening, that they're saying, you know what, I just don't find that to be ethical. I don't, I don't believe that that, I, that vision of God is, matches my ethical worldview. A racist God, a sexist God, a God of bloodlust. So they tap out, right? They just say, no, no thanks. Um, and the worry that I have is that there might be some sense of like a God of distraction, right? We might be going from like these cruel gods and saying, no thanks, I'm going to tune out to whatever I'm going to tune out to. And it's not to say that any of these things are inherently bad, um, but that's a lot of time. They, they say that um, 50 billion hours is the equivalent of one human living six million years. And you think of what you could do in six million years. Probably a world of progress. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a life. Um, or what about uh, just brutal consumerism. This is a billboard. I, I looked it up on Snopes. It's a real billboard. Uh, and it's, um, there's only one way to live, the Trump way, right above homeless people, right? And it's saying Trump Tower, you know, this is the one way to live. Um, this dramatic disparity in the haves and the haves not, and just a brutal sense uh, that all that matters is getting the most toys. So let's talk about the religion of tomorrow. And I'll stop right here just for a second to say that 
really what's motivating me is a personal story, and it is, for lack of a better term, my own faith crisis. Just realizing that Mormonism that I grew up with is not uh, the thing I thought it was. And it's far more nuanced and not as, not as happy as I maybe thought it was. Um, though I still have this longing for so much of what is right in the religion. And in, after this faith crisis, I, I felt a sense of nihilism and a sense like I didn't know what to hold on to. And I eventually decided that I was going to try to hold on to three ideas. Vision, paradise, coupled with knowledge, transcend our past, yet include it, and embrace truth, beauty, and goodness. I'm going to skip over that, but the three ideals are truth, beauty, and goodness, and I see these as the head, the heart, and the hands. Just the raw, most basic, elemental aspects, elemental virtues uh, that we might pursue. And I might define them Actually, I'm going, to come, I'm going to define them first. So truth I see as intellectual honesty. I don't know exactly what to believe in terms of a cosmology or all the fine details in that regard, but I know that I can stand for intellectual honesty, and that is an attitude, the pursuit of truth. Beauty being I know that I uh, need more spiritual experiences in my life more profound spiritual experiences, to really pay attention and be attuned to the heart and really nurture those moments of beauty and profound presence. And goodness, having compassion for the least among us. So from these three ideals, I can turn to these uh, three people who talked about them. Albert Einstein said, the ideals that have lighted my way and time after time have given me new courage to face life cheerfully have been kindness, beauty, and truth. And W.E.B. Du Bois, in the middle here, he said that the purpose of education wasn't just to get a job, to work in a factory. The purpose of education is to come to a deeper knowledge of truth, beauty, and goodness. That's the goal. And Bertrand Russell wrote probably my very favorite piece of writing uh, right toward the end of his life. He's, it's just a short piece and in an introduction to one of his, uh, I think an essay. He says, three passions, simple but overwhelmingly strong, have governed my life. The longing for love, which I would say is beauty. The search for knowledge, which I would say is truth. And unbearable pity for the suffering of mankind, which I would say is goodness. And then the, he goes on to explain what he means by that in really profound, beautiful, poetic language. And he, he's doing this as an old man looking back, saying these are the keystones of his life. So intellectual rigor, spiritual sensitivity, and compassion for the least among us. So when we ask what sort of gods, I don't know the exact answer. I don't know all the answers to that. But I hope that we can touch into these elemental virtues and ideals and have them be a guiding star as we take each step to have an anchor of sorts as we move forward. I'll just end with a thought about transhumanism and why I'm so drawn to it. Because, again, I don't know the answers, but I know the, evol the general direction. Uh, and Becoming more godlike is the general direction as long as it's grounded in this compassion for the least among us. I'll say that as we move in this direction, we will find Zion and we will find paradise and it will be coupled with knowledge. Unlike the story of Adam and Eve where it was paradise without knowledge, we will move in that direction. And I'll end by saying, I believe our descendants are saying, Come to Zion. Come to Zion. Thank you. I, believe, I think I have just a few moments. Maybe? I don't know. Two minutes. Okay. 
Yeah, Jackson. Okay, so um, I'm not giving this push pushback, but I'm anticipating that this could be a pushback you could receive. What would you respond for people that say that you are looking to create a god in your own image, or you know that you are constructing you know your ideal god? You know, you, mm -hmm. you are you, you are creating the god you want to worship. You know, which is kind of what you suggested. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> I would say yes. I, I mean, I don't, I don't mean that, I don't know. The, to me, it doesn't strike me as, as bad because I say all of the gods have been in the image of humans. Um, so, but it's not, I don't, I don't have a good image. I'm, I'm listening, you know, for that. I'm not positing any specifics about what that god might be, but I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive to what that might be. Does that make sense? So, <laughs> Carl, I don't know if you had a question. I was gonna just, just say that, like, since when has it ever been any different? Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, Ben. And I'd also add to say something like, well, point out the dangers of not doing that. Right. The dangers of not doing that is uh, consumerism. You just default to the easiest. It doesn't have to be consumerism necessarily, but it's living mindlessly, in my opinion. If you're not deliberately envisioning the future you want, you'll end up with the future you don't want. Yeah, Sam. The thing I'm struck with is these seem like first world gods, not third world gods. Oh, interesting, elaborate. Well, who has time to watch Netflix <laughs> when you barely have enough food to live? Who has time to play okay. World of Warcraft when you're worried about your children? Mm -hmm. Right? Who has time to worry about all of these beautiful, beneficent things? Bertrand Russell, spend time in the library yeah. when you're worried about your crops dying. These are first world gods. These are not third world gods. The gods of distraction? Yeah, gods oh, yeah. of no, but even the gods you replace them with. <laughs> People play World of Warcraft in the third world. Just yeah. let us know. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. That's all the time we have. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you can catch him after in the hall. Thanks, guys. <laughs>